Welcome back to another episode of Partners in Crime. In today's video, we're going to be telling you the bizarre tale of the man known as the Jungle King, Herman Perry. This unique story is unlike any other murder case, taking us deep into the jungles of India during World War II. The saga began on March 3, 1944. Perry was wanted by his commanding officer for dereliction of duty, a crime punishable with military prison time. Perry was no stranger to problems with superiors, having already served time in the military jails. Unfortunately, it was his unwillingness to return to those military jails that unfolded a series of events that gave birth to his murderous account. It was Perry's lieutenant, Harold Cody, who found him hiding with his rifle. Despite warnings to stay where he was, his lieutenant advanced. Perry shot and killed Cody in cold blood, then fled into the dense northern Burmese jungles. It was the only major criminal case of the China-Burma-India theater of World War II. Perry was chased by a team of army military police and was subsequently captured after being injured. It seemed like the end of the line for Perry, but he wasn't going to make things so easy. While recovering in a field hospital, he stood trial by a court-martial who found him guilty and sentenced him to death. This wasn't an instant process though, as there was much paperwork to be done. During this bureaucratic process, Perry escaped the Leo stockade where he was being held, finding refuge once again in the dark, wild jungles. Amazingly, Perry found new ways to antagonize the armed forces, making a mockery of them in the process. After several weeks of avoiding capture, Perry infiltrated a restricted army area and robbed two soldiers. Despite being wounded during his escape, he once again made it back to the jungle. It was at this point that a full-on manhunt was commissioned by General Joe Cranston, who ordered the team to bring him in dead or alive. The manhunt team, consisting of the 159th Military Police Battalion, pursued Perry through the dense and undeveloped jungles for 18 days straight. Perry survived by stealing food from unsuspecting natives, always seeming to be one step ahead of the team in pursuit. It wasn't until the MP team reached the Naga Hills that they were given a hint by one of the natives, who told them where they could find Perry. Perry tried to disguise himself as one of the Naga natives, but was ultimately caught after a struggle that resulted in wounds for the man nicknamed the Jungle King. After having his wounds treated in another field hospital, he was transferred to an escape-proof stockade. The army was wholly uninterested in repeating their mistakes. Five days after his capture, he was hanged at dawn, making the only execution of an American in the CBI theater during World War II. The whole ordeal had lasted a year, from murder to hanging. Perhaps the most incredible aspect of Perry's story is the way he adapted to life in the jungle. With a 1,000 rupee reward over his head and the army scouring the brothels of Calcutta, Perry had to take refuge in the most unforgiving of landscapes. The tiger-infested jungles were a far cry from the Detroit city streets that Perry had called home. On top of that, the inhabitants of these lands were unlike anything he had ever seen or experienced before. The native men of Naga were headhunters, scantily clad men with tribal tattoos who adorned their huts with the skulls of their enemies. Showcasing true resourcefulness that might have proved useful to the army had things not turned sour. Perry traded the tins of food he had plundered in exchange for protection in the Naga village. Impressed with the lightweight metals and Perry's tall stature, they invited him to stay. Keep in mind that these aren't exactly friendly neighbors. The British described them as the wildest and most barbarous of hill tribes, and looked upon with dread and horror by the neighbors of the plains who considered them as ruthless robbers and murderers. Perhaps this is why Perry felt a kindred spirit amongst them. Perry became completely integrated into the jungle society. He partook in rituals and went on headhunting ventures. Incredibly, he made such an impression that he was married to a 14-year-old Naga girl. Their marriage was consummated in a special ceremonial hut, and Perry utilized supplies he had stolen to plant farms. His child bride eventually gave birth to a child. He had made quite a name for himself in the village before being captured for good on July 20, 1944. Upon his rise to the gallows, Perry's last words were quoted as, Now the hell will start. What do you guys make of the Jungle King? Is this the most bizarre murder case you've heard? Let us know in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit like and subscribe to see similar content in the future.